What's up, what's up, what's up? It's your boy, The Network. And today's topics are, yes, I said topics, that's plural. 1.6A through C, changes to routing protocol parameters. 1.6B, migrate parts of the network to IPv6. And 1.6C, Charlie, routing protocol migration. These are all subsections under the section 1.6. Recognize proposed changes to the networks. This is for the CCMP route exam, exam code 300-101 version 2.0 and let's go ahead and take a look at the exam blueprint to see where we came from and where we going I decided to roll these all up into one video because I felt like these topics go hand in hand so it just makes sense to do do all three of these topics in one video plus I need to catch up um so we just wrapped up UDP latency section 1.5 B and we are now moving on to section 1.6, recognize proposed changes to the network. And we just gonna do all three of these topics right here. So back to the PowerPoint. So yeah, recognizing proposed changes to the network. As you know, in the IT field, there's always gonna be change. You, you're in the wrong field if you're not expecting change, you expect to do the same thing all the time. I mean, you can see you would buy, you could buy a cell phone, you know, today, and it can become obsolete in a, in a couple months because technology evolves so fast. So you can imagine a corporate network or even your home network. It's just technology just changes all the time. So you got to be able to move with the times. You know, you can't just be a dinosaur. You can't be the Flintstones when it comes to networking. As an engineer, you got to recognize changes. One of the main things you could do is, as you can see right here, 1.68 alpha is the topic. Changes to routing protocol parameters. We gonna go over no commands right now because this is just gonna be all theory. Um, there is some you know commands we can go over, but I believe there is a separate section for IPv6, so we can go over commands. If there is one command you want to go over or at least know, it's IPv6 unicast routing. That's how you turn on IPv6 on your on a Cisco router. So you can memorize that. That's unicast hyphen routing ipv6 unicast hyphen routing one of the things you could do is using the administrative distance now if you remember ain't no way you gonna move on to the mp level without knowing what ad or administrative distance is so an administrative distance is a is basically the trustworthiness of a specific route and the lower the AD for a specific route is, the more trustworthy it is. The higher it is, the less you want to trust it. So, for example, these are the most common AD or administrative distances for routing protocols. Each one of them are, has an administrative distance. OSPF is a common one, 110. Uh, EIGRP is 90 so on and so forth if you look at this chart there's a lot more other ones that are you know this is not too in depth but these are the most common ones that you need to memorize and you should know by now but anyways you can um let's say you need to make changes to the network as far as your routing protocols you need to introduce ospf routes to your to your uh network or vice versa or you know eigrp whatever what you can do is you can modify the administrative distance for each of these routing protocols if you if need be, you know, but these are the default administrative distances. So if you let's say you got an OSPF route that you want entrusted over an EIGRP route. So since the administrative distance for OSPF is 110 and you want to trust that route more or if you want to you prefer that route more because you let's say you, you, you know, you just installed a new router or whatever, whatever the case may be. You would take that OSPF route and change this administrative distance to something lower than 90. So like, let's say 85 or 70, then your routers are going to prefer that route over the EIGRP route, even though the distance, the administrative distance for an OSPF route would be higher. But if you modified it, it would choose the OSPF route more. That's one thing you could do if you want to uh, introduce some uh, some new routes or make some make some changes to your routing protocols in your network another thing you can do when you need to make changes to, as far as routes go is introducing a uh, route readers redistribution now if you take a look at this topology right here 
I forgot. Oh, yeah, they'll go to stores right there. It's Watermark. A lot of these things be Watermark. So that makes it a lot easier on me. Go ahead and check them out. SmartPCTricks.com. Anyways, you see at the top, you got the orange. This is an EIGRP domain, right? At the bottom, you got an OSPF domain. Let's say your company was originally the EIGRP domain, right? And for some, you know, your company's doing well and y'all acquired another company or y'all, you know, bought out another company, but they was running another, um, another routing protocol. They was running OSPF, right? So in order to make these two networks exchange routes, you got to do route reach redistribution. So one of your ASBRs and one of your edge routers is going to have to translate these routes from OSPF to EIGRP or vice versa. Um, that's one way you could uh, introduce new routes into your network or combine these two routes into your network or integrate both of these type of routes in your network is by using route redistribution. So, you know, when you're acquiring a new company or if your company grows or let's say, you know, um, another division of your company just, you know, you have some local IT guys or some local network engineer guys, they just decided for some reason to run a different routing protocol. There's, there's going to be some changes. So you got to adapt with the times. One thing you could do is route redistribution as far as, you know, incorporating new routes to your network. Now, moving on to section 1.6B, Bravo, uh, migrating parts of the network to IPv6. As you know, IPv4 is the old type of addressing scheme. It's not old, it's still current, we still use it, but the future is IPv6. A lot more, there's a lot more addresses available. You know, we've been, we long ran out of I, uh, uh, IP, uh, public IP addresses to, to assign. So that's why they introduced IPv6 because you can, like they explained for every person that's on earth, they that person can get every person can get like a billion something addresses. I don't remember the number. I'll put a link in the description below. But IPv6 got hella more addresses than IPv4. Simply put, and with the introduction of IPv6, you gotta adapt with the times. That's what this is all about. The theme for this, the theme for this, uh, is is about change. One thing you could do to adapt with the times and incorporate IPv6 in your network. Well, these three, these six. These six topics right here is uh, checking your equipment for IPv6 compatibility. Nowadays, with uh, new devices that come out, nine times out of ten, they are going to uh, IPv6 compatible. You might have some old equipment that's not. That's why, like I said, it's like the old cell phone. You got to adapt with the times. You buy something now, technology, it becomes obsolete in, in, in a couple of months. So, um Part of me hates preaching this because I started studying for this stuff in like, say, 2014. It's 2018 now, right? We're about to be in 2019. They've been saying we've been running out of IP addresses since like 2011 or adder, public addresses that are assign, uh, assignable. Um, but you still got to adapt to the time because, you know, not one day, but there's going to be a time where you really have to adapt. It was like, OK, now we've really got to adjust to the times and incorporate our network into making it IPv6 compatible. So, yeah, you got, uh, nowadays you got this, uh, the Catalyst 4500 family of Cisco routers that are IPv6 compatible, 7600 series, the ISR 1800, I got an 1841. Remember that router I showed y'all in the, uh, which router, which was, which one was that? That was the, I can't remember what topic it was, but the 1841 router, apparently that's IPv6 compatible. That was an old router. So, you know, nine times out of 10, if you get in new uh, Cisco equipment, it is going to be IPv6 compatible, but you definitely want to double check. Um, I got a link there at the bottom right there. I'll put a link in the description. I'll put that link in the description below. IPv6.net slash routers. You can find some Soho routers there that'll show you what's compatible. But like I said, nine times out of 10, if you buy a newer router, uh, and that's like at, at least in the 2010s, um, it's going to be IPv6 compatible. But, but you want you definitely want to be sure to see if it is if it is compatible. You also want to check with your ISP to see if they support IPv6. Nine times out of 10, they will. 
I have Bright House Networks, or otherwise known as uh, Spectrum. Now they just changed it. Um, you want to make sure that your ISP supports IPv6 uh, addressing schemes and uh, and uh, networking infrastructure. Uh, as you see right here, I went to the link at the bottom, test-ipv6.com. Right, you put that in. That's going to tell you the ISPs as of now that's compatible or that supports IPv6. Comcast is is right about now. They they've got about mo probably most most customers. Um, Google, uh, Spectrum. There goes Spectrum right there, number three. Um, that's the top ten that I pulled up. But there was a whole more, the whole bunch more. I just took a snapshot of this uh, just to show y'all. Who supports uh, IPv6? Nine times out of ten, your ISP will support IPv6. They might look at you funny, like you really okay. You were ahead of the times, or you just trying to, you know, you a little crazy, you know. But you know, nine times out of ten, they'll be able to support. But it's always good to check with your ISP to see if they support IPv6. Another method you could do to get with the times is. Um, is, tun is a tunneling feature. It's an IP where you could transfer your your IPv6 traffic over an IPv6 over IPv4 tunnel. This is called, I believe, uh, dual stacking. So you basically, you see over here on the left-hand side, you got an IPv4 only computer, but an IPv6 enabled computer. And same thing on the other side, right? But the tunnel in the middle, you got a tunnel for IPv6, IPv6 traffic at the bottom and IPv4 traffic at the top, right? So you can still transfer both IPv4 and IPv6, but in separate tunnels. Um, this is uh, this is called dual stacking. So that's one method to kind of um, uh, be able to support IPv6 in your in your network. But of course, as you see in the middle. You you got the internet, so you want to make sure that your ISP supports IPv6. You might have some IPv6 routers. You might have some um, IPv6 compatible gateways, but you definitely want to make sure your ISP supports it. Nine times out of ten, you should be able to uh, locally communicate with your devices IP, you know, using IPv6 addressing, but if you want to get out to the network, you need to use some kind of tunneling feature like this to be able to, you know, do it on the WAN scale. NAT64, that's an, another method you could use to get with the times. You know what NATing is. If you, you're studying at the NP level, you definitely know what NATing is. Well, they do the same thing with IPv, IPv6. It's basically called NAT64. So, if you don't know if you don't know what natting is natting is network address translation you got public ip i mean you got private ip addresses you got the them in the range of the of the 10 uh the 10 dot network you got the uh the uh one seven two dot sixteen through thirty one network and the one ninety two one nine sixty eight people like people people at home are usually in using that type of uh addressing scheme but these are all public uh private ip addresses you need to be able to trans uh translate that to the outside network you use network addressing translation that was one feature that they use to help reserve ip addressing remember i said ipv4 we started running out of addresses that was their way of recycling it by using natting so natting is also a technique that we can use with IPv6. As you see in this picture right here, you got your subscribers all using IPv6. I don't know what neighborhood is going to have everybody using IPv6, but there's some customers that are using IPv6. As you can see, the subscribers on the left-hand side, and let's say your provider supports IPv6, right? That's the wrong source. I didn't put that right. That's actually, uh, I believe I got this from... Uh, I got this from uh, from F5 Networks. They do like load balancing and stuff. So that's the wrong source. But anyways, uh, so you got your provider there in the middle and they support IPv6. But as you know, the internet, nine times out of 10, is you gonna be uh, uh, communicating using IPv4. So 
if you're a provider, most likely they could, they would be able to, you know, use this technique uh, is natting IPv6 networks to IPv4. This is one technique to do that. As you look, as you look at this slide, you can see this kind of helps visualize it. There's also MPT versus six. Uh, this is not something that's really used a lot. Um, I really couldn't really explain it. If, if you if you have a better understanding of this, go ahead and uh, you know leave a comment below. But basically, it's you taking the prefix. You going from IPv6 to IPv6, but you got your routers kind of translating the the prefix somehow. I I, I can't really explain this. I, I I'm not going to sit here and make pretend. But this is one feature you can use. It's not really used a lot though. This is kind of similar to dual stacking, right? Actually, it is kind of it is kind of it is dual stacking because you got you got your dual stack as you see in the middle. You got the internet that's basically ipv4 right and then the two networks on the outside as you see one on the left and one on the right they run in ipv6 right so let's say your your network is on the left hand side and you run in ipv6 right and then you got your uh corporate office on the other side of the world they run in ipv6 right but between y'all uh, the tunnel your both your isps are only supporting ipv4 right they gotta have or your edge devices need to be able to be uh they need to be uh dual stack compatible for to uh for for your uh two networks to communicate right so as you see at the bottom take a look at that that packet right you got the ipv6 header in the middle with the data running ipv uh using ipv6 but the header is ipv4 so when it's going from one network to one network it's encap encapsulated in in ipv6 but there's an ipv4 header tacked on once it gets to the other side the ipv4 header is going to be taken off and then the ipv6 data is going to be taken to the uh, other side of the network that's one thing you could do to get with the times that's that's the theme for today get with the times and that's pretty much it changes we discussed changes to routing protocol parameters ways you can do that is using route redistribution or modified in the ad or administrative distance migrating parts of the network to ipv6 and um and protocol routing protocol migration which route redistribution like i said is one way you could do that that's why i said we're gonna lump these all in one um like i said and we ain't gonna do no more hands-on we ain't gonna do no hands-on today this is mostly theory we're talking about ipv6 there is another section for ipv6 addressing and subnetting we will do since if you want to get your hands dirty you know keep keep tuning in to the network bro that's gonna be in section 3.2 you like this video go ahead comment like subscribe to the network